always helps if I switch my microphone on. Hopefully you can all hear me. Fantastic. Just move the chat box out the way. Slide that down there. Here we go. I thought we'd start with oil today just for a change. A um, couple of reasons for that. Um, really just to pick up on what Anna was saying about the VPOC. There's also a nice uh, VPA lesson in there with a breakaway trade. Um, and it also brings into play the fact that the daily chart is so important, uh, the levels and how they play out in terms of multiple time frames. So even if you're a scalping trader, I mean, I've got 15 second, one minute and three minute up at the top here. But even as a scalping trader, the level that is now being tested by uh, this is the WTI futures contract for September is absolutely key because the market is testing and retesting this level constantly and having a real struggle to get through the sort of $42 a barrel uh, technical level at the moment. In fact, if I pop open the the three minute here, there's a couple of, uh, well, several things here really. First of all, um, you've got a really nice breakaway move from this congestion region where it took us from uh, 41.75 up to 42 really nice move away strong candles rising price action nice volume below and then we start to hit a bit of weakness but the interesting thing about it is if you look at the volume point of control here the the facet of the indicator that it's really a multifaceted device a multifaceted indicator because not only are we interested in the volume point of control here and the amount of volume congesting around there and the idea that this is a seesaw, it's the fulcrum of the market and what we're waiting for is a breakaway from that fulcrum. And then that breakaway has to be supported with volume. What we're also looking at as a, as a trade advances or a trade develops is we're looking at these low volume regions because volume acts in the same way as this level here, which is price based. These blue and red levels on here are on the accumulation distribution indicator, and they are purely based on price. The thicker the line, then the greater is that area of resistance or support. That's the way the indicator works. You might be able to see these little numbers up and down here. That's a one. In other words, that's been tested once. This is a nine. This has been tested multiple times. This is three and so on and so forth. And this one up at the top here is being tested as I speak. So it's a key level, but basically volume works in exactly the same way because as the price advances through these levels and comes to a low volume region, what you expect to see is this sort of price action where the, where the price goes through that pretty smoothly. It doesn't require a huge amount of volume because there isn't a great deal of a congestion there to cause the market to pause. So from a trading perspective, it's absolutely key that you uh, you have the VPOC up, not only to give you all the information about these volume profiles up and down the chart, where the volume point of control is itself and how that's going to move, but also as markets approach these higher volume regions or move towards these slower, these lower volume regions. Because if you're in a trade, and the market is moving to a low volume region, either to the upside or the downside, if this market was gonna break down. Once you start to go down here, you see the volume falling away very rapidly. What that means is there's very little in terms of uh, old orders, of uh, limit orders sitting here waiting to be triggered. And once you see that, it's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a very strong signal that the market is gonna move through there pretty swiftly because there's very little to cause it to pause. Obviously, you've got price-based support and price-based resistance as well, but we use the two in tandem. Now, what we've got at the moment is we've got congestion phase building. The volume is building in this region. We've got uh, a resistance overhead, which is absolutely clinical at uh, 42.05. And obviously, if the market is gonna break through there, then you've got a very nice little platform of support in place. And from a volume perspective, the volume is really falling away very rapidly from here. So the move from 42.05 up to 42.10 should be pretty straightforward. And obviously, you would then be moving down onto a slightly slower time frame chart, move down onto the five minute maybe, get a heads up on what is going to happen in terms of the five minute chart. This is the level we're at. We've got some resistance building here as well, similar sort of thing. But more importantly, if you're on the three minute chart and you're looking to take a, a scalping position to the upside, 
what you want to see is this uh, attenuation in volume here because this is falling away rapidly. You've got an absolute ton that goes out over here. If I pull this back a bit, you'll see how deep it is. This is pretty deep, not as deep as the volume point of control here, but it's still pretty significant. So if the market does manage to break through that and you're on a maybe a one minute, two minute chart, that you want to know that information because once it gets through there, this volume here is very light and therefore you should expect the market to move through there pretty swiftly which obviously is a trader you want to know. It's as simple as that. And that's one of the, I guess that's a double, a double advantage of using multiple time frames and also uh, using the, the volume point of control to give you that information. Now, the other nice thing about this move was uh, we saw the, the breakaway from, this was the volume point of control. When the market's around the volume point of control, it's basically the price is in agreement. There's no strong bias. There's no strong bearish bias. There's no strong bullish bias. It's, it's an equal seesaw of, of two equal weights, which is always the analogy I use. Once one of those uh, people on a seesaw gets off and someone heavier gets on or someone lighter gets on, it's going to unbalance. It's be, it'll be unbalanced and it will move away from equilibrium. That in principle is exactly what happens when the market breaks away from the volume point of control itself. You can see the trend monitors transitioned into blue. We've got rising volume, rising price. We break through this region. And the next question, of course, is, well, where would you get in? And, you know, that's a personal, that's a personal uh, decision you have to make. Do you wait for this candle? Are you going to get in on this candle or do you want to wait for it? And the other way of doing it, of course, is to step down. If you're on a five minute chart, is to step down to a one, two, three minute chart. And that will give you extra information about the, the validity of the move. Uh, the volume associated with that move, other things that you've got in the way that may cause the market to pause, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's using all this information all the time. And we're struggling at this level. You know, it's still testing that level. It's not going through. If it breaks through there, terrific. You know, it should be on a run. Now, the other point about this chart, I just want to show you this is the daily. This is the level that this market has been sat at. It cannot get through the $42 per barrel region. Once it gets through there, it's pretty much away and you then go down onto the weekly chart. You'd be looking at, again, you'd be back onto the volume point of control, um, see what's above. But you can see the trend monitor here. Ever since the plunge here, that was the massive plunge we had in oil prices, huge amount of volume. What did we get? Massive volatility spike. We were down to four or $5 a barrel. And since then, obviously, we've seen the reversal come back up to this extensive trend. We're in this extended congestion phase right now. And of course, there's an awful lot of politics. This is not just technical. And what's helping at the moment, and particularly across the commodity sector, sector as a whole, is obviously the, the weakness in the US dollar, which is causing, uh, which is certainly helping all the metals to rise. Let's just go over onto silver. And we write about this extensively. You can read it on Anna's blog. We go very public with what we uh, believe is gonna happen. Uh, we've written, been writing about this for the last few weeks. Uh, silver going up into the roaring 20s, which it is at the moment. That's on the daily. And exactly the same principles apply. We've had this extensive congestion phase, massive amount of volume around the volume point of control. Then we start to see volume rising, gradual rising in volume as we start to move away. Then we start to move into lower volume regions. Then we've had these big spikes over the last few days. Now they are a worrying signal for two reasons. First, because the, of the amount of volume that is being driven into this market, which you know volume is good, but there are also extremes. This is extreme right now. You only have to eyeball across the chart. If I pull it back, we've got another extreme one over here, a little bit higher even than that one. But in the context of, of normal price action, you know, this is extreme. If you couple that with the fact that we've got a volatility trigger here, we've actually uh, gone straight through that yesterday, no problem at all. Today looks like we're having a little bit of a pullback. You know, it's hardly a great surprise. You've also got to remember that a lot of people will be profit taking right now, but this is, is going up a little bit too rapidly. It's a little bit like the, um, I was gonna say, well, Bitcoin certainly one example. Uh, it's the sort of dot-com bubble, uh, share prices that you would see this almost vertical um, a chart where you've got the price going up, as I say, almost vertically, and you know for a fact that that at some point it's going to pause and it's going to crash. I'm not saying this is going to crash. What I am saying is that this is going up a little bit too steeply. 
and there is going to be congestion. There will probably be a reversal uh, fairly soon. That's not to say the bullish trend hasn't uh, hasn't uh, ended yet. It's certainly well in play, and we expect it to go higher still. Particularly as you've got gold following the same path itself. Just pull up the gold chart. There we go. Again, another one we write about. We trade this ourselves. This is gold. This is a, a very nice example of VPA in action. No volatility triggers on here. So, you know, there's nothing particularly to worry about. As you can see, we've gone up into low volume. So there's there's very little in the way of, of volume to cause the market to pause. Uh, there's very little price resistance overhead either because this is moving up into these, these um, uh, very high levels that we had uh, many years ago where we almost hit $2,000, but we never actually got there. So we're moving up nicely, good strong volume under there. I've got the volume switched off because I've got so much data coming in, but I could flick that on in a minute. That's the volume point of control, and this is the move away and up higher. And, and again, it's one you can read about on Anna's site also. Okay, let's go and see what's happening on... Um, where should we go next? Let's just see what's happening on the uh, US markets. It's all a bit weak at the moment. Um, this is the uh, the YM, the NQ, and the ES. And for today, they are actually moving in the same direction. Uh, and what's slightly anomalous is the NQ is actually moving more quickly than the other two. So we've actually got a reverse of what uh, what has been happening over the last few weeks where the NQ has been rising, the other two have either been lagging or falling. Uh, we've now got the inverse of that where we've got the NQ falling pretty hard and that may well be down to uh, to results coming out of some of the big ones. Um, this is falling as well, but also the, the YM, but they're not falling quite as quickly. In terms of uh, intraday, you can see it here pretty much. The one to go for if you're trading short is not uh, is not the YM and the ES. It's, well, the ES possibly, certainly on the NQ at the moment. You know that would be the one that would be my my favourite because it's it's got that momentum to it. The other two are trading in relatively tight range. Certainly the YM, you know that's in congestion. It's at the VPOC. The NQ has broken away from the VPOC. Let's pull the five minute up. There we go. Nice breakaway straight through this low volume node here, congestion in the high volume node, straight through the low volume node, back into building congestion now, we want to see it drop down the bottom. Look at the trend monitor. What have we got? Bright red pretty much throughout. All you get are these slight variations throughout this period where we're into congestion, we're at the volume point of control, but the trend monitor never actually transitioned through into a bullish trend. It just kept saying, yeah, okay, uh, I can see the fact that there's um, you know, a bit of reversal going on. We've gone to dark blue, but we haven't, we're not going bright blue. We're coming back out into red, darker red there. So we're in congestion. Now we're confirming that this is a, a good solid move to the downside. So let's hop over onto the uh, multiple Renkos. I've got the ES up here. Let's just change this over to the NQ. Spang that in there. There we go. Let's just uh, change these over. This is on 15 second, so we'll pop that over there. Just wait for that to settle. Okay, flip that on, that's 22, okay. And the, the 22 refers to the number of ticks. So that's on 22 tick, and it's moving really fast, as you can see, and it's one of the abuses of trading on Renko. This is on 30 second. So we'll just set that one up. Excuse me a moment. <clears throat> okay, that's on 34 tick. Click that on. That delivers your optimal tick. There it is. And this is on the one minute. And this is just a very, very powerful way. Not many traders will, will know this. Not many traders will use this. Uh, it's a very powerful way to use, the, uh, uh, use both a non-time-based chart and also have the advantages of, of, of volume price analysis below because you've got both uh, time, you've got volume and time down here, volume and price down here, and you've got the advantage of trading off the tick chart here on a non-time-based chart. And the Renko chart is just a fabulous tool for doing this, using it in multiple time frames in this way. So basically, we've got 15 seconds, 30 seconds, and one minute below. 
you're eyeballing down onto the volume profiles here. We've got weakness over here, tried to rally, breaking away from the volume point of control, rising volume to the downside. It's confirmed on here. You can see the trend dots. The trend dots always change first. We had a minor pause point here. Now we're going that we go above. So when we're in the downtrend, we want to see the trend dots on the top here, pushing down, pushing down, pushing down all the time, all the way down this ski slope, minor pause point here, back on the top again. So it goes, you know, underneath and then back on the top again. That's where you want to see if you're trading short right now. You know, scalp, 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 trend monitor is bright red right away through. So it's a combination. And I've also got the uh, accumulation distribution on here, as you can see, to give you uh, the priced base levels for uh, support and resistance coming into play all the time. It's just a very, very powerful way of trading using both time and non-time based charts and the Renko optimizer delivering the optimal setting for that particular instrument. If I was to change this to the YM or the ES, which I'm not going to do because I just want to stay with this for the time being, these values would be different. If it was on the uh, if it was on the YM, which is the uh, Dow Jones, these would be in points. On the NQ, this is in ticks. And on the ES, it would also be in ticks. But it would also differ because each instrument you trade has a different profile it's like a human being we're all different and and everyone seems to think that you know this instrument is the same as that instrument well they're not they all have completely different profiles if i put gold on here it would have a completely different profile again the same is true in tick charts people think oh, i'm going to trade a hundred tick chart for gold well why well someone told me well you know that's not good enough because i can tell you the 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 tick profile for gold is is hugely different to the tick profile for the es it's very very different it's not as quick as you would think so you just you're constantly matching the optimal tick setting with the the market that you're trading and the instrument this of course changes throughout the session this is the other point it changes it's not constant you do have to go and check these from time to time if you're on the very fast ones which we are on here we're on 15 second 30 second and a minute i would be checking these every few minutes maybe every five minutes, something like that, just to make sure I'm still trading at the optimal speed. If you're trading on a one, two, three minute combination, you can leave it a lot longer. Maybe you check every 10, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. It's just a, a rule of thumb, sort of common sense sort of type of thing. You can see here, we've got this little reversal going on. What happened here? We had buying coming in. You can see it here. A uh, good spike to the downside, decent volume under there. So we've had having a little bit of a rally. What happens to the trend dots? They change color, they go underneath, and now we've gone to blue and we're starting to rise up the other way. Haven't uh, quite made that change here, but then, you know, as with all things, as with using multiple time frames, it happens in your fastest chart and then ripples through. Precisely the same principle here in terms of a Renko chart. It's starting to happen here. It's, you've got a little pivot underneath, the trend dots have moved underneath, and here we're still in a, a congestion phase, if you will. We haven't really moved out of that phase. Now, the other important point to note is that obviously on these charts, we're coming up to the volume point of control on the time base chart. So what do we expect to see? Congestion, because this is the heaviest area of volume on the volume point of control. So, you know, well, are we going to be surprised when we see our trade move into congestion? No, because we've got uh, the, the 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 volume point of control here and we've got the volume point of control here as well if it's going to break away then it's going to do so on good volume the trend monitor as you can see here has transitioned to blue on 15 it's transitioning through on 30 no change yet on a minute this is going to be the slowest one this will go in maybe into a darker red maybe dark blue before it transitions fully you can see it developing here we've got uh, we're developing into the darker blue here no change here yet no change here yet either this is all quick stuff, but then this is scalping. The Renko indicator is a scalping tool. It's a surgical instrument. This is not a hammer that you're going to bash the markets with. It's a surgical precision tool. It's as simple as that. So you're going to be scalping in and out, in and out all day long. And that's what it was designed to do. It smooths out the price action. It delivers these wonderful charts with bricks. It also shows you momentum, which you don't see on a time-based chart. What you'll see on these time-based charts when the market's moving fast is the price action will, will you know, be doing that or will be going up quite quickly, but you won't see momentum. This will speed up and slow down because this is not based on time. This is based on 22 ticks. And once 22 ticks have gone through on the price action, it will close the brick and move on to the next one, irrespective of how long that takes, whether it takes a nanosecond, a millisecond, a microsecond, half a second, whatever. 
that's the advantage of trading on either a, a, a Renko chart or a tick chart or any other non-time-based chart, you will see momentum. We've got the volume point of control here on the 15 seconds, so you know there's going to be some congestion building there. We've got a nice region of price-based resistance overhead on the accumulation distribution indicator. Lots of volume building around here, so lots of reasons to think that uh, you know this is going to pause here for a little bit. Bear in mind this is a 15-second chart, so it's all pretty quick. Let's see what the volume uh, comes in on that one how it's going to shape up, how it's going to close off. Back up to the volume point of control. Looks like it's going to have a try and try and run through there. We're starting to break away from here, so that's good. We want to see our trend monitor transition. We're seeing our trend dots change. We've got our trend dots changed here. We've got a change here, so that's all in agreement. So, you know, that's fine. Haven't seen it change yet here. And this all depends on the speed you want to trade at and whether your main trading window, if you like, is the one in the middle. Or maybe you've got more than three, but it's really trying to decide, you know, what is your what is your 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 window of opportunity, which is going to be your primary trading uh, view. And these two charts on either side are really just giving you the heads up on the fastest one, what's coming through into your trading window out the other side this is what's developing you can see there we're just just starting to move up the trend dots moving underneath we've got a little blue one developing no change on the trend monitor as of yet on these faster ones but if you're into this sort of level of trading you know this is this is perfectly reasonable we've now broken through that uh, resistance that was overhead price based resistance on the time chart you know so that's now acting as support below at uh, 94 there uh, so we're just now moving up the chart. Off we go. We've got a nice reversal. So we've gone into blue here. We're starting to see that blue transition through on here. And that's how we do it. And these, the trend monitor here, you can actually adjust for sensitivity. I've got these set, set to slightly different, but you can actually adjust them to, to smooth out the the changes, in other words, you can either see more of that change or less of a congestion phase. So you can increase it. In other words, be more confident that the trend has actually changed or you can reduce it slightly. You can fine tune them. It's like a, a volume control, if you will. Sorry, Let me just check on that question. That's what I... Not use it on is a Renko chart really only for scalping? Absolutely, uh, you can use it on. You know, you can have it on slower. Uh, you can, you know, you could you could set it to. Uh, I'm just thinking in terms of of a, of a YM index. You could set it to 10 points, for example, or 15 points. Um, in the current environment, the YM may move several hundred points in a day. So that's you know that's not unreasonable. But generally speaking, the Re the Renko and the tick charts are much more of an intraday scalping tool. They're not, um, they're not really designed or they're not really developed for, um, you know, longer term in inverted commas trends as such. So that's a nice little, nice little trade going on there. Nice little reversal coming in and all signaled, and you know you're seeing it develop in real time. Let's just pop that up. There we go. What have we got now? Well, we've got, we had that platform, if you remember, that was resistance. And in fact, it was tested with that candle there. It held. So it was obviously acting as support once we breached it, which is fine. So it held there, little pivot underneath. Nice injection of volume on that candles. What's that telling you? Well, you know, volume and price in agreement, which is good. Volume and price are in agreement here. It's a narrow spread candle, but then the volume's fallen away. So that's fine. A little bit of weakness on that that next candle. The little wick you might not be able to see is there. So there's a little bit of weakness there. We've got low volume above. So you know, all things being equal, we should go through that reasonably swiftly. The Renkos are developing nicely. Let's go down to the one minute, see if we can see anything different there. There we are. Now in terms of the one minute, what we're looking at is obviously we've got this huge wedge of volume sitting in here, which the market has got to push through. Now, I'm also keeping an eye on the VIX on the right-hand side, which you can't see at the moment, but at the moment, it's reversed. It's come off the, I'll pull it over so you can see it. Go to this silly size, sorry about that. There we go. 
this was the this was the rally in the VIX. This is why the VIX. This is why the indices were falling. This was the rally in uh, the VIX. That's why it was falling. And we've now got a reversal, which was now we are, which is now why we are seeing the indices starting to rally a bit. And if you don't have this up, you're really going to struggle. Trust me, you're going to struggle. Um, because if you're an intraday scalping trader, then that's the chart you've got to have up. If you're trading index futures, you've got to have that chart up because it tells you what's going to happen next. And you just watch it for reversals all the time. It's still falling, still falling. And you obviously have it on a, on a match time frame. So you'll have it that, that I had on a 1, 5, 15, 20, but I'd probably have it on a 1, 2, 3, 4, something like that. Depends on the time frame available. If you haven't got the VIX on your platform, then you can watch it on uh, investing.com. Investing.com is a, is a fabulous site, bar none. We don't have any association with them other than they take Anna's uh, analysis from time to time. But if you want to find out what's going on in terms of bonds, Anna spent a long time on bonds last week, or was it on Tuesday? I can't remember now. Uh, if you want to find out what the bond prices are, what bond yields are doing, uh, and you don't know where to go, go to investing.com. If you want to find out what's going on in the VIX, go to investing.com. If you want to find out what's going on in commodities, go to investing.com. If you haven't got them on the platform, that is the place to go. So if we're trading this as scalp to the upside, um, you know, on the one minute time frame here, there's a lot of volume here we've got to battle through. So we want to see some decent volume coming in. We want to see uh, buying as the, the markets drop there, little wick to the lower body, good volume under that. So that's that's a good sign. And you know, that's buying. We have the same sort of thing here. So we've got buying coming in. We've got a little platform of support underneath, a little bit of resistance coming in here. And we've got this volume to battle through. So we want to see decent volume under these candles. This is where it's going to struggle maybe at uh, four points higher at 720, something like that. And then we've got a slightly deeper level here. This is a, a, a level that's been tested three times and held. You can see the little three alongside there. Now, if we can get up to 750, which is a long way away, bear in mind, this is the NQ. So this is, you know, if you take that number of points, you'll be thousands of dollars up, I can assure you, um, on a decent contract. Um, but if you get to that level, then that's where it becomes more interesting. And let's suppose you were trading a slower time frame and you were going to wait and be patient, then that's the level that you know I would be looking at to get through this level here of resistance. Because once you're through there, you've got this whole region, you've got no volume, and you've got no price resistance to speak of. So in terms of taking a trade, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity to get from 750 to 79. I mean it's almost 50 points, it's huge. Now, obviously, you'd be looking at the other time frames, but certainly from a one, and this is obviously a one minute time frame, so you'd have to look at the slower time frames. But suppose this was a, I don't know, let's say it's a 10 minute or a 15 minute chart to, to be more realistic, or a five minute chart, something like that. Then once you see something like this, this gives you a very, very strong signal that the market is going to move through there, all things being equal. Assuming there's no fundamental news, assuming Trump doesn't tweet something, assuming Brexit doesn't come along and hijack everything, assuming there isn't some wonder drug that's released for you know COVID-19 and blah blah blah, uh, you know this is a decent opportunity with relatively low risk, and that's what you're looking at the whole time because when you get into a trade, you've got to make a snap judgment as to whether the risk that you're prepared to put on the table is justified in terms of what you think is the likely return. And I don't mean the, the normal, uh, ridiculous, I was gonna swear actually, sorry about that, uh, the, the normal absurd uh, things that you hear from people on the internet about risk reward. I've gotta have one, two to one, I've gotta have three to one, you know, that's my risk reward, well, you know, fine. Whatever floats your boat, I suppose. Um, the way we do it, the way we teach it is, you look at the chart, the chart gives you that information, and if you're comfortable with what the chart is telling you, then that's fine. Because if there's no uh, there's no barriers to progress, either upside or downside, then there's a pretty good chance that that price action is going to move through there pretty quickly and on relatively low volume. Volume has to be an agreement, of course, but it doesn't need huge tons of effort to get through there. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, are we always looking for divergence between VIX and the markets? Absolutely, because the VIX goes up and markets go down and the VIX goes down and markets go up. That's the way it's been built. 
uh, it's the way it works. Uh, the VIX, in case you're not aware of it, works on puts and calls in the options market and therefore reflects the balance of uh, fear and greed in an index. And it's often called the fear indicator for that reason. And when the VIX is low, it's time to go. In other words, complacency reigns. Um, and when the VIX is high, it's time to buy. In other, in other words, everyone's panic selling. And if you've got um, large cojones, then you go in and buy. It's as simple as that. So it's, it's an inverse indicator of risk. Simple as that. I'm going to pass back to Anna. That developed nicely, that little run higher. <laughs> 